In addition to your civil rights, you actually get an additional set of rights as a consumer of mental health. These rights are designed to make sure you are treated fairly when receiving services within the mental health system. One of the rights that I always am abhorred to think that they had to put it in a statute is that the consumers have the right to be treated with dignity and respect. Something we always you know, just take for granted, but people with disabilities historically were denied those rights. The greatest shift has been to refocus away from the institution, talking about uh, people being able to set their own objectives and goals for their lives. Today's mental health system exists to serve the citizens of Michigan as individual consumers of mental health. When you go to a doctor, um, you have to sign papers to consent to treatment. So when you receive treatment, when you go to a mental health agency to get treatment for your mental health, you're going to have to sign consent. You are ultimately in control of the mental health services you receive, whether directly or through your guardian. Without informed consent, no one can give you treatment or tell others confidential information about you and your treatment. No one can pressure you into making a decision. And you should never have to make a decision if you don't understand all the facts. If you feel that your right to make an informed decision is being violated, contact your rights office. Even if a court has ordered you to receive mental health services, you still have the right to have a driver's license, marry and divorce, make a will, buy and sell property, manage your own affairs, and decide most things about your life. I want that to live, live on my own independently, in an apartment, um, maybe get married. Um. Okay. If somebody is saying that you're not competent, they're treating you as if you're not competent, they're not letting you make your own decisions when the court has not done that, that is against your rights, that, that is abuse. You will continue to be treated as competent unless a court decides that you are legally incompetent and appoints a guardian for you. Basically, the role of a guardian will be to uh, facilitate helping uh, the uh, consumer. Uh, Diane Brown is my, my, my guardian. Yeah, she's very really nice. A guardian is appointed to serve you. A judge may authorize a guardian to make major decisions for you or only to help you decide certain things. If you are ever uncomfortable with your guardian or think you should be able to make more decisions on your own, you can ask the court to make a change. I'm Ann from Discola County. We must think of ourselves as people and insist that those treating us also regard us as people. Our mental illness is just a small sliver of who we are. It does not define us. Walk a mile in my shoes. As a consumer of mental health, you and your family members should always be treated with dignity and respect. What does it mean not to be treated with dignity? Not respecting you and um, not liking you for who you are. We're all valuable people. Everybody's entitled to be treated like a valuable human being. It's one of those things we take for granted. Um, but it's something that everyone deserves. If we're not valuing our customer, we're not treating them with dignity or respect. As a valued individual, no one should ever abuse or neglect you. No one has the right to abuse you physically, sexually, or in any other way. Abuse, calling you names and stuff, maybe hitting you. And I was thinking it was my fault, but I said, wait a minute, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I have to start learning how to speak up for myself because I have the rights. But uh, the, uh, the teachers, and I tell them, and that person don't do that. You also have a right not to be neglected. If those who care for you are failing to give you proper care or attention, you should contact your rights officer immediately. Your rights officer will help you decide if you are being neglected. A person may not know that they're being neglected as the code would talk about neglect, um, 
but generally then we would have other staff or we would have guardians and parents that would report that. Sometimes I always would tell um, my kids or group or all Sydney. If they feel they've been abused or neglected, they need to call the rights office so the rights office can start to investigate. If you have been abused or neglected or suspect that another recipient has been abused or neglected, you should report it right away to a staff person and the Office of Recipient Rights. If they can't make the phone call themselves, they need to ask a staff person to do it for them because the staff person is required to do that.